The value of a champion in League of Legends can be measured in a bunch of different ways. Do they have CC? How much damage do they output or negate? And most importantly, are they hot? Yes. But honestly, for the longest time, there has never really been a conventional way to define whether or not a champion is good. Some people default to win rate, but when you do that, you notice harder champions like Akali, Aphelios, and Irelia almost never have a positive win rate because the majority of solo queue players have a negative IQ. Some people default to play rate, but when you do that, you notice that people aren't choosing champions because they're good, they're choosing them because they're forever trapped in horny jail. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Ari Mains. Please, just stop. And of course, some people like me use trauma, defining how good a champion is via how negatively they've affected our gaming experience. Shoutouts to Hecarim, by the way, whom canonically, after the last patch, has become the first ever League of Legends champion to be killed twice. <laughs> But thankfully, after years of working, hundreds of nights of analysis, and a ton, I mean a ton of alcoholism, I've come up with a solid formula to define how good a champion actually is. A formula that holds up no matter which way you look at it, a formula that will be my magnum opus at least for like a week or two. The power of a champion is completely defined by their margin of error. The harder a champion is to play incorrectly, the better a champion is, because statistically speaking, their effectiveness increases overall. This rings true, especially in ranked, because when you situate into an elo that you belong in, your margin of error stays relatively the same because your opponents adjust to your skill level as well. Unless you just so happen to be a god at the game, you're not gonna be able to consistently outplay everyone in ranked forever. That'll be like signing Tom Brady to a little league team. Doesn't really make sense, but I would pay to watch that. <laughs> Which is why, even in the pro scenes of Korea, characters like Udyr and Pantheon are highly prioritized. Because everyone is so good in those games that removing the chance of missing skill shots and reducing the risk of misplays overall is necessary to make a powerful team that is consistent. In short, the harder it is to make mistakes on a champion and the less significant those mistakes are, the better a champion is overall. And though this can be proven by every single champion in the game, there is one character that proves it better than the rest. A champion that exemplifies the idea of being a valuable pick while not overstepping her boundaries and getting publicly executed by Riot Games. Morgana is the mother of League of Legends. And I'm not just saying this because she came out in 2009, which is the same time this happened. Hey. I'm saying it because almost every single thing Morgana does is about being a mother. She has to defend her stupid children, put the bad boys in timeout, and occasionally yell at everyone so hard that they shit their pants. Don't fucking run away from me! And on an unrelated note, Morgana has the longest CC chain in League of Legends by far. By almost double. But we'll get to that soon. First, we need to understand all of her abilities. Morgana's passive is to heal herself equal to 20% of the damage dealt by her abilities to champions, large minions, and monsters, giving her a ton of sustain in lane or in more recent patches as a jungler. And when I say sustain, I mean sustain. I mean, just look at this. This is Mundo's level of healing as a passive. Her Q, Dark Binding, roots you for an entire three seconds while dealing up to 300 plus 90% of her AP as magic damage with only a 10 second cooldown. Let me explain how fucked up these numbers are. With enough CDR and blue buff, it is within the realm of reason to reduce the CD of this ability down to 4.8 seconds or less, meaning she'll have the ability to root you for 3 seconds every 4.8 seconds, which is more hard CC than Mauser's entire ultimate on a 4 second cooldown. And since this hilarious item called Everfrost exists, <laughs> every single time she lands lands the binding, she gets a free Everfrost afterwards, making the entire CC of her first binding landed 4.5 seconds. Not to mention that her Q is thicker than a bowl of oatmeal, which means that in choke points, she's going to be burning enemy flashes unless they're ready to get a penalty for AFKing in their game. But look at the bright side, when Morgana lands this ability, at least you have enough time to contemplate why you didn't uninstall the game in the first place, and then afterwards, you can go to the kitchen and get yourself a treat, sit down, 
relax, catch up on your favorite anime, call your parents, tell them you love them, come back to your computer, and you will still be rooted. The three seconds is insanely powerful for such a low CD, but by far the worst part is that Morgana doesn't have to risk anything at all. She just throws it, and if you cleanse, flash, or Zanya so that you don't get hit by it, in 4.8 seconds she could throw it again from a safe distance. Meaning at level 1 Morgana's the only character that has two things you gotta dodge. Her dark binding and the game itself. Morgana's W poisons a target area for 5 seconds and deals damage every half second which increases based on the target's missing health. Basically, the longer you stand in it or the more hurt you are, the more this ability hurts, scaling up to a whopping 170% bonus damage. Which makes sense logistically, walking on broken glass hurts, but if Morgana came into your hospital room and threw broken glass on your hospital bed, it'll probably hurt more. Pairing it with her Q basically creates a timeout zone that allows you to feel as dumb as you have to in order to learn your lesson. Imagine if your mom said, son, I'm disappointed in you. Go to your room. And then you go to your room and she lights the floor on fire. At least the burning on your feet can help keep the existential dread from setting in. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. But that's not it. This ability CD is reduced by 5% whenever she heals from her passive. Meaning if she's healing from multiple targets, it will stack the CDR and be up before it's gone away in the first place. So going back to the mom analogy, imagine if your mom said, you know what, son, it's okay. You can leave your room. So you leave your room and the living room is on fire as well. This also gives her insane wave clear and also accidentally gives her quite possibly the best lane taxing ability in the game. Morgana's E is a nuh -uh that didn't happen button. Morgana shields herself or a target ally for up to 5 seconds. The shield absorbs magic damage and grants crowd control immunity while the shield holds. Meaning for the next 5 seconds, the target is CC immune unless magic damage can break the shield. But if you're an AD character with CC that does AD damage, it just means that the target's gonna be CC immune for 5 seconds because none of your abilities can break the shield. Which is a win-win. If she blocks magic damage, it is blocking a lot of damage. And if she's only blocking physical damage, that keeps them CC immune for 5 seconds, which is Olaf's whole thing. Which brings us back to the mom slash authority figure. She can tell you not to move, but you can't tell her not to move. Because if you do, she can just laugh it off and walk away. On top of that, she could black shield anyone on her team, which is basically your mom going, Hey, Timothy! Stop CC locking your little brother. This ability is on an 18 second cooldown, but with enough ability haste it can be dropped down to about 8 seconds, meaning mathematically it can be on someone for longer than it isn't late game. And finally, this brings us to Morgana's ultimate move. If Morgana's Q is the cheese, and her W is the bread, her ultimate move are the goddamn knuckles. Morgana tethers every enemy champion within range, dealing magic damage and slowing and revealing them over the next 3 seconds. She also gains a bit of movement speed, helping her stick to them like an angry ex-girlfriend. After the 3 seconds are up, she deals the exact same amount of magic damage again and stuns enemies that are tethered for 1.5 seconds, dealing a total of 600 plus 140% AP is magic damage. And since this ability is AoE and it is pretty common for her to land it on all five enemy champions, she can deal a total of 3000 plus 700% of her AP as damage without even aiming an ability, which in and of itself is an impressive amount of damage. But this is the point where we have to zoom out and look at the bigger picture and explain how all of her numbers and ratios fit so perfectly to make her such a concise League of Legends champion. But first, another crazy ratio. Did you know that the majority of the people watching this video aren't subscribed? We do our best to release high quality content on this channel as much as we can, so I think that you'd have fun ringing the bell and not missing a single one of these bangers. Whether you subscribe or don't, I still love you, but I think that you would have fun subscribing, so please do. Let's keep going. Cue the classical music, please. The most important thing about Morgana's design is how form-fitted it is to create an absolute demon. Her binding is three seconds long, which is exactly exactly how long it takes for her ultimate to stun you after the tether. If her binding and her tether both land, that's 4.5 seconds worth of CC, which basically makes you tank an entire duration of Morgana's W, which is 5 seconds long. But you know what else is 5 seconds long? Her black shield, which keeps her safe as she manages to weave around and land her auto attacks. Every single thing in her kit is so concise and perfect that one more inch or one less inch would either make her useless or an insane powerhouse. I can honestly say when it comes to her abilities, Morgana is one of the most balanced characters in the game, but wait. 
because someone at Riot took a bathroom break with a bag of crushed up Adderall, doused in two parts vodka, two parts Red Bull, and one part gasoline, and when he came out, he said... Morgana's Q lasts 3 seconds, so if you land Morgana's Q, hit a W and wait 1.5 seconds, start Morgana's Ultimate, wait another 1.5 seconds, Everfrost, and then let your ult finish and press another W, your Q will be up again soon enough to land a second one, creating a total of 9 seconds that an enemy champion cannot move. 9 seconds of hard CC by herself, and the only thing she needs to do it is land one binding. To give you guys an example of how long it is, we're gonna do our first ever can we talk about this moment of silence for Hecarim, a champion that Riot just murdered in cold blood? Let's do it. That's pretty fucking long. Morgana is a very rare breed of League of Legends champion. She has an insanely concise design when used together creates a fulfilling character who has an insane amount of play potential. Whether you're looking to ruin someone's day, ruin someone's ability to ruin someone's day, or make someone lose twice as much LP via giving them a lever penalty after you land a single Q, Morgana is a fantastic choice. But keep in mind that Morgana is an old character and Morgana players are an ancient class of human being. So if you want to play Morgana well, all you gotta do is remember your roots. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If there's something else you want to talk about, leave it in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get to it. Also, I might start doing Can We Talk About This League of Legends one week and then something else the other week because I think I'd have fun talking about other stuff. I think competitive gaming was one of my favorite episodes, but then you look at Diego and Lilia, those are bangers too. So if next week's episode isn't about League of Legends, don't think that I'm running away. I still love League. It's one of the best games ever, but I do want to talk about other stuff like Returnal. Have you guys seen that shit? Follow me on Twitch.com TV slash Scooch Live. I'm probably playing it right now. And if I'm not, I'm probably playing something else. Anyways, click the videos that are on the screen. Click the videos that are on the screen. Click the videos that are on the screen. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you so much. And I love you. And sub if you haven't. Okay, goodbye.